Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'd like to show you how to process voucher badges into Winpax Accounting. For many accountants, it's a regular job to receive voucher badges from bank books or cash books or from their partners, to check them and finally to post the vouchers in Winpax Accounting. In our previous video, we showed already how to pre-enter vouchers in Winpax Cashbook and how to create voucher badges. So let's see how easy it is to post these vouchers in Winpax Accounting. The start menu of Winpax Accounting 4 shows the journals that I recently opened. This provides me with quick access to the journals that I use the most. Important to note here, the main purpose of journals is to keep different currencies apart. Projects and development corporation typically use various currencies. In our example project, we use US dollars and the local currency Nepalese rupees. That's why we have two journals in our project accounting. When I open the journal for the NPR country currency, I receive a message that there is new voucher badge. I click on yes and I'm taken directly to the voucher badge overview. The voucher badge overview shows all the voucher badges that have already been downloaded. The overview is divided into current and done voucher badges. The current voucher badges have not yet been processed. At the top, the list shows the badge that was worked on last. I can select the new badge from the cash book in Gangadi with a mouse click and edit it with the open function. The voucher badge window appears showing the vouchers that were pre-entered in Cashbook. The window is split into two. The top area shows the accounting data of the selected pre-entered voucher. The lower part shows the voucher list of all the vouchers in the batch. I can switch easily between the vouchers using the navigation function. The voucher with the lowest entry number in the voucher batch is shown first. The transaction is displayed in the transaction section. I don't need to specify this in Winpax Cashbook. Winpax Cashbook automatically determines it based on the selected accounts and the income expense field. In this example, a cost account has been selected and the amount is an expense. That's why the cost transaction is pre-selected. The other pre-entered voucher data appears in the voucher information area. The following data was copied from the voucher by the cashier in Winpax Cashbook. Recipient depositor, voucher date, posting text, amount in voucher currency. The account assignment section shows which account the expense or income was assigned to in Winpax Cashbook. The additional account assignment field shows further assignments of the voucher to fundings and budget structures. This can be important for the billing for donors, for instance. In the toolbar, there are functions for editing and posting the voucher badge. I can also reverse changes. If I click on edit, the fields that I can edit are switched to input mode. For example, the cost category or the assigned budget lines. Two fields cannot be edited. The amount in voucher currency and the account paid from, which the cash book is assigned to. This prevents a difference between the account balance and the cash book. That's why any corrections of incorrect amounts always have to be made in Winpax cash book first. By the way, if I don't want a voucher to be posted with the incorrect amount, I can prevent this via the status at the top. Mandatory fields are shown in yellow. In the previous video, I made a mistake in Winpax cash book. The voucher date does not match the date on the receipt. Let me correct it. And if you have a fairly large fleet of vehicles, it might be worth noting which vehicle the gas was for. I can use the posting text to do this. After I've checked all the vouchers in the voucher batch and edited them if necessary, I can finally post the batch. The voucher with the lowest entry number is posted first and the postings are automatically transferred into the journal. If an error occurs, for instance if I forgot to select the accounts, 
an error message appears explaining what I need to do to be able to post the vouchers. The posting process stops and the error can be corrected. In our case, there aren't any errors. The posting confirmation is the same as for a normal posting. At the end, I receive two reports that show the posted and the unposted vouchers in the batch. This provides me with a complete documentation for the processed voucher batch. After posting, the status of the vouchers in the batch is posted. Of course, it's not possible to change vouchers with the status anymore. After all the vouchers have been posted, I can't make any more changes to the batch. The batch is automatically marked as done. The batch processing is finished. In the journal, I can now see the postings that match the vouchers from the cash book. So you see, it's really easy and it saves a whole lot of work for the accountants. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to our channel. More information is found on our website below. Thanks and hope to see you soon.